For blood test number three in 2024, we saw that my biological age was 16.1 years younger than my chronological, and that's when using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge. So what might be contributing to these data? So starting off with prescription meds, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism in my 20s, so I've been taking levothyroxine, 137.5 micrograms per day since then. All right, so that brings us to supplements. So a staple in the approach for the non-summer months, as I live in Boston, uh, for eight to nine months out of the year is vitamin D, 1,000 I use per day, and we can see that I took it for 56 or all 56 days that correspond to this blood test. So what is that 56-day period? Well, it starts immediately or started immediately after blood test number two, which was on March 4th, and lasted until the day before this test, which was on April 28th. So that 56-day period is the period from test number two to test number three. I also supplemented with methyl B12, 1,000 micrograms per day, but only 21 of the 56 days, and that's with the goal of potentially lowering homocysteine. And from, from putting uh, higher levels and lower levels of methyl B12 in my approach, it seems to have somewhat of a 10% or less impact on homocysteine, which isn't a big bump, and I'm looking into other ways to try to reduce it. As a heads up on a future video, one strategy that I'm trying is increasing branch chain amino acid levels or BCAAs, and I'll have more on that in an upcoming video. All right, so I also supplemented with nicotinic acid, 50 to 60 milligrams per day for half of the days for the 56 day period, 28 days. And that's with the goal of increasing NAD. Now, I haven't had it in there for every day because I've been playing around with when to include it with the rationale of using it on exercise days as that, that's when I may need the NAD boot, NAD boost the most. All right, and that's it. No other purported GEER protectors or Xenolinux. Which brings us to diet. More specifically, what diet composition corresponds to blood test number th three in 2024? And that's what we'll see here. Average daily dietary intake, and note that I track my diet every day, weighing all my food, then entering it into a chronometer, and then manually entering that data into a spreadsheet. So we're gonna look at the 56 day average from test number two through test number three. The first half of the diet is shown here, and this list is ranked in grams, uh, ranked on the left in grams on the right, with the exception of green tea, which is in ounces. And if you wanna use what I use for green tea, discount link in the video's description. All right, so were there any experiments for this test? The goal is to improve the weak spots while not messing up all the other biomarkers. So there were two main experiments for this test. The first was uh, the LDL Dunedin Pace experiment. So in my data, relatively higher levels of LDL are significantly correlated with a slower epigenetic pace of aging. So to test that, I've been trying to slowly bump uh, LDL above my normal range. And uh, if you missed the rationale, the full rationale to that, I'll put that video in the, in the right corner. But that data is not yet in from uh, True Diagnostic, so I'm hoping to see how that data looks in about a week or two. So I added five eggs per week, and I raised coconut butter by a few grams per day with the goal of increasing LDL. I also added clover sprouts into my diet, and that's an average of 73 grams per day, but as we'll see in a minute, it was actually a lot more than that. And that's because crimson clover seeds or red clover seeds, which is what I used for sprouting, have high levels of trigonelline, which increases NAD in mice. So to further test that, for 11 days prior to this test, I added uh, or I doubled clover sprout intake relative to an April test, 250 grams per day with the goal of increasing NAD. And whether or not if it worked, we'll see that in Wednesday's video. All right, so on to the second half of the diet as shown there, where we can see that I ate 54 different foods for this test. Now, the diet isn't always purposefully clean. I do include cheat meals as having no cheat meals can increase the risk of having a binge or overeating, and I'm trying to eliminate and minimize that risk. Uh, so two cheat meals keeps me satiated with a little bit of junk while not obsessing about junk or food uh, with more cheat meals. So the standard for my cheat meal is chocolate mixed with peanut butter. So I make like a homemade Reese's peanut butter cup. And I also sometimes add extra sweetener to it. So for this, this test, it was sugar. In other tests, it's been honey, sweetened condensed milk. I'm actually probably working on the recipe for how I enjoy it best. So in, in terms of how many calories the chocolate and sugar contributed in terms of their percentage of the overall calories in the diet, uh, the chocolate chips 
for two days, two days of intake, it was about 606 calories. The sugar over two days was 311 calories. And when adding them together, dividing them by total calorie intake for the 56-day period, the junk adds up to 0.8% of total calories. So the diet is 99.1 or 2, sorry, percent clean. All right, so this list is ranked in grams. What about ranking foods in terms of calories? And that's what we can see here. This is the top 10 list. And note that this, these data are generated by Chronometer. If you want to track your own diet like I do, there's a discount link for Chronometer in the video's description. So in terms of the top food from where I'm getting my calories from, once again, as it's been for many tests, it's from sardines. So I'm not a vegan, unlike others in this space, not vegan. It, and the reason rationale for that is not is nothing other than my biomarkers are better when I include fish in the diet. All right, so then in terms of the list, the top 10 list, nine of this, uh, the, the 10 foods that are on this list were also on the list for test number two. And the goal there is to not blow up the system. I'm trying to make small changes to improve the weak spot. So I want to keep the overall structure while not messing up the system. So in terms of what came out and what, uh, what went in, I increased peanut intake because it's a rich source of tryptophan betaine, which declines during aging. And I cut down on almonds correspondingly for to match the calories, so I'm not increasing calorie intake. So almonds left the top 10 list, and I didn't increase pistachio intake, but they entered the top 10 list for the first time. All right, what about macronutrients? So starting off with calorie intake, average daily calorie intake was 2077. And I've said this for many blood tests or many diets that correspond to blood tests, but this, once again, is the closest to lowest or close to lowest average daily calorie intake since I started tracking diet in April of 2015. So my previous low was almost identical to this for the last test, 2076. And, and as a quick heads up, for the first test in 16 tests, where I've sequentially reduced calorie intake for each of those 16, 16 tests, the next test, I've purposely increased calorie intake uh, by a small amount. Uh, and that's to test, um, well, quick story, uh, uh, red blood cells and hemoglobin and SHBG. Those are the biomarkers that are involved. Those are the ones I'm looking to impact with a relatively higher calorie intake. Small increase for now to see if it moves in the right, those three biomarkers move in the right direction. That story, we'll cover that more for test number four's video in a couple months or maybe in a few weeks. Average daily protein intake for this test was about 101 grams per day, which was 19.4% of total calories. In terms of total fat, we can see that here. Uh, average daily fat intake was 90 grams per day, which is 39.1% of total calories. And just to illustrate how this compares test over test, we can see test number two's data here. Average daily fat intake was 84 grams per day, and that six gram increase uh, was made up mostly from saturated fat, coconut butter. I increased coconut butter as that's significantly correlated with higher LDL in my data. Again, trying to test that LDL Dunedin pace correlation. But there was also a small increase from monounsaturated fatty acids, probably in part because of an increase in peanut intake. But as I keep mentioning, the goal is to make small changes <clears throat> without blowing up the system and keeping almost everything else constant. And we can see that for omega-3 and omega-6, as they were 9.5 and 16 grams for test number three, and also 9.5 and 16 grams for test number two. All right, next up is carb intake. And total carbs were 257 grams per day, but note that net carbs equals total carbs minus fiber. Fiber intake that corresponded to this test was about 87 grams per day, and when subtracting that from total carbs, gives a net carbs of a 171 grams per day. We could then multiply that 171 by four calories per gram to see that net carbs yields 33% of my total diet for this test. Now, note that fiber also contributes calories to the diet, and that's because within fiber, it's comprised of insoluble and soluble fiber. The soluble fiber fraction, which is about 20%, is fermented by gut bacteria into short chain fatty acids. So in other words, a fraction of total fiber is converted into fat. So for this test, that was about 178 calories that was converted or potentially converted from fiber into short chain fatty acids, which is 8.5% of total calories. So now that we know the breakdowns, we can look at net macros. And by adding the calories that came from fiber being converted into short chain, potentially converted into short chain fatty acids, and adding that to the 39.1%, we can see that net macros were 
47.6% fat, 33% net carbs, and 19.4% protein. All right, note that within total carbs, I also track sugar intake, but more specifically, total fructose, because the diet is rich in fructose containing vegetables and fruits. And in my data, uh, higher total fructose is significantly correlated with more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. So I have to try to keep to uh, aim to limit my fructose intake somewhat. So uh, sucrose is half fructose. So when dividing 47.1 divided by two, and then adding that to fructose, that yields a total fructose of 59 grams per day. And I know I say this in every video, that may seem like a lot, but my lowest fructose intake since starting diet tracking in 2015 is 57 and a half grams per day. So 59 is pretty close to that. Now I've since been able to reduce fructose intake a bit further. So uh, test number four may be the first test since 2015 where I've been able to go a bit below my lowest 57.5 grams per day, and we'll see if that impacts biomarkers or not. I may not have been able to cut fructose by enough to make a, a dent on uh, potential weak spots, or if it impacts anything, we'll find out. All right, what about micronutrients that correspond to test number three? So starting with uh, vitamins, as shown, full list. It may be hard to see, so I'd encourage going full screen if you can't see it. Note that there is full RDA coverage, and for anyone starting on this journey, that's what I generally re recommend. Not trying to mega dose anything, but just going for uh, meeting the RDA for all vitamins and minerals. That's the baseline for a few tests. Now, many of these vitamins, though, are purposefully much higher than the RDA, as I'm following correlations, their correlations, with a panel of about 25 biomarkers. And if you're interested in those correlations, I post them on Patreon, so check it out. Just to highlight one of those real quick, you can see vitamin K at about 25, uh, 2550 micrograms per day. What's been defined as an adequate intake is only 100 micrograms per day. Uh, so that's 25x the RDA, and that's only because I'm following its correlation. It has a net positive correlative score with that panel of about 25 biomarkers that represent many different organ systems. Now, just to highlight, too, the consistency in the approach, we can see vitamin intake for test number two. And for the most part, almost everything is I, or in the same ballpark as the same, with very small exceptions. Uh, you can see that choline intake is a bit higher, and that's because I added eggs, which are a rich source of choline. All right, next up is mineral intake, as we can see there. And just to compare against test number two, here too, we can see that it's almost completely identical test over test. So again, I know I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but the goal is to make small targeted experiments without blowing up the overall system. And from vitamins and minerals, we can see that that's mostly the case. There is one exception though, with a heads up now for test number four, experiments for test number four. I've since increased selenium intake to what's been defined as a tolerable upper limit, 400 micrograms per day. And note that this is all from whole food, almost exclusively coming from Brazil nuts and mushrooms, which are my main sources of selenium. And that's because selenium is required for conversion of free T4, the thyroid hormone T4, into free T3. And I'll have more on that story a week from today. That's the plan to get out of thyroid focus video a week from today. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, uh, check us out on Patreon, where I post data for daily diet. So rather than looking at 56-day averages uh, once every couple of months for blood tests, I post daily diet on Patreon. I've also got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, NAD quantification, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes a different panel from the metabolomics, including ApoB and Grimage, green tea, as I mentioned earlier, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.